it's Renata with Renata's Garden and it's time for another episode of Unearth Horticulture. Today's topic is all about pups and if you're familiar with that horticultural term you'll know that it refers to the daughter plants that form on specific types of plants and I've got a few examples here to show you today and I'm going to talk a little bit more about how these types of plants work. I have three main types of plants that pup here on this table. First, I have one of my all-time favorites, mangave. And mangave are interesting because they are a newer hybrid. They are a cross between a manfrita and an agave plant. And if you've ever cared for an agave, you know that they grow extremely slow, but they also handle a lot of growing conditions well. They handle um, higher light and drought stress a little bit better. They're kind of like, they're, they're a succulent basically. Um, and then Manfreda has a little bit of a faster growth uh, than agave do. And so what breeders did is they crossed Manfreda and agave so that they could get all of these really cool mangave hybrids that have faster growth than agave but have that really interesting look to them. So I've started collecting a few myself. Um, this one right here is called Tooth Fairy because it has really sharp uh, spines along the margins of its leaves. I actually really love this one, but it is brutal to repot. So you have to be really careful with that. And I just scratched my face with it. So a little bit more precarious of a plant. Um, this one is, I believe, make sure I get it right. This is Pineapple Express, and you can understand why it's called Pineapple Express. It kind of looks like pineapple top. Um, it's really fun, and this one actually pups quite readily, this hybrid does. And what I mean when I say pups readily, it just is more likely to throw off pups, and it's, it does it more frequently. And then this one is called Freckles and Speckles, and this one is actually really special, and I'm going to talk about it later, because as you can probably see, it's got this really big um, inflorescence uh, flower spike coming right out of the center, so we're going to get to that next. Um, but then, aside from the mangaves, I have a little Echeveria succulent, which is really common to see in different forms. They've got this rosette look to them. And then, last, I have a bromeliad. And bromeliads aren't quite in the agave and succulent world, uh, but they do pup readily. And this is a neoregalia. It's actually one that I'm selling this December in my uh, plant kits. It's really fun, um, really colorful. So bromeliads actually tend to pup pretty readily, depending on their, their uh, species. So, what in, who, no, no, no. <laughs> Cats, am I right? <laughs> All right, so, mangave. This mangave, this freckles and speckles, uh, actually is shooting a terminal flower spike. And agaves and some other plants, um, they do this. They shoot a terminal flower spike, and what that really means is that the center where all of the growth comes from, the terminal growing point, which just means the end growing point, um, the plant decides that it's done with life, basically. And uh, some plants grow laterally, like they branch, like trees have branches. And so if you prune the top terminal growth point, one of the terminal branches, one of the end points, it just shoots off more branches down lower on the plant. However, there are some types of plants that don't do that. And when they have a terminal flower spike, that means that they are toward the end of their life. Um, plants that pup tend to have this phenomenon occur. So it happens when, uh, it happens when the plant is toward the end of its life cycle. Maybe it's thrown off a few pups already. It's cloned itself. Its genetics are going to survive. And so then the mother plant that originally um, you had potted 
shoots this flower spike. And this occurred with one of my mangaves recently. And as you can see, um, it's quite long. <laughs> I'd say it's five feet by now. Um, and agaves do this. If you've ever been to Arizona, you can see they they shoot off the flowers and then they're done. If you cut off the flower, because it's kind of creepy, um, I don't know why it gives that, that feel, but if you cut that off, then it kills the plant right away. Um, but this one, I've already started to see the leaves curl and dry up, even though we've been giving it regular water. Um, so it's really toward the end of its life. This can happen with pups, with agaves, mangaves, anything, um, any plant that really pups out tends to have the mother plant die after it, it pups. Um, this isn't always the case. Uh, some orchids throw off pups and they don't die readily. Uh, Echeveria actually, they send off pups at the base and sometimes and they, they keep on living. But um, with plants like agaves, it's really common to see this kind of phenomenon. So yeah, I'm just gonna continue to watch this, this freaky mangave grow until it's done flowering. And I'll probably post some pictures so y'all can see that as it goes. The cool thing about pups is that they are exact genetic clones of the original mother plant. And so it is an asexual reproduction method that plants go through to continue on the same genetics. And so um, that's a really great way to get the same exact plant. Um, if the mother plant dies with the terminal flower and you have a pup, then there's no loss because you can just divide that pup off and put it into its own pot and you'll have virtually the same plant over again. And you can keep repeating this process and it's a chain reaction. If you're interested in seeing uh, how to divide your pups, I actually go over that in the tutorial video that's a part of the bromeliad plant kit that I am selling the month of December. So definitely check that out and learn how to divide your pups. I should mention that we actually have a native species in our prairies that pups pretty readily and that is yucca. And I'm sure you've seen yucca around in landscapes. They're pretty common because they're a native in the prairies, in the Great Plains. They grow really well in their landscapes. Um, and yucca, they, they pup readily. Um, they, the mother plant doesn't tend to die after it pups though. So that's one great thing about yucca. So Google it so you can see a picture because I don't have one, but um, you can definitely uh, keep your eye out for those on the road. I hope you've enjoyed watching this episode about all things pups, and I also hope you enjoy watching pups grow on your plants in the future. It's really an exciting phenomenon to watch happen in the plant world. As always, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments below or to shoot me a direct message. I'm always happy to answer questions, all things horticulture. So until next time, I'm Renata with Renata's Garden and you've been watching Unearth Horticulture.